morning to you all directly begin with uh, gm hopkins i hope you can listen to me uh, so if there is any problem please interrupt me okay uh, with this advice i would like to begin this session with uh, gm hopkins and uh, gm hopkins as you all know uh, his full name is gerard manley hopkins right gotidella gerard manley hopkins is a victorian poet uh, now victorian era dali kanuvantaha oba poet he is an english poet and a jesuit priest uh, who comes in the victorian era of english literature and the uh, very interesting thing is that he became uh, today he is a well known writer for all of us but he became famous posthumously posthumously means after his death isn't it so avaru iga ole well known poet and poet anta hesaru vasi agidru kuda avaru famous agid yavaga anta helidre after his death when robert bridges publishes his poetry about poems robert bridges avara ond poems anna publish madida nantara yaru gm hopkins avara saavina nantara famous aagtare so adu ondu it's a very interesting thing about gm hopkins and and uh, if theme he dealt with his poetry uh, is usually we can uh, categorize or classify his poetry into two types according to the theme which he dealt with his poetry so avaru a ondu theme yenu bardidare avtama poetry alli adanna aadharisi naavu eradu bhagalagi vibhagisabodu ಒಂದು ಏನು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಪೋಯಟ್ರಿ ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಬ್ರೈಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಕೆನ್ ಬಿ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಟೆರಿಬಲ್ ಸೊ ಒಂದನ್ನ ಬ್ರೈಟ್ ಅಂತ ಕರೆದ್ರೆ ಮತ್ತೊಂದನ್ನ ಟೆರಿಬಲ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿಬಹುದು ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಡಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಬ್ರೈಟ್ ಮೀನ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಟು ಆರ್ ವಿತ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಜಿ ಎಂ ಹಾಪ್ಕಿನ್ಸ್ ಪೋಯಟ್ರಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ his poetry mainly which come under this section deal with god god's grandeur and the omnipresence of uh, god and everything related to god and uh, to be precise with it uh, deals with the permanence or the eternality so on the eternal thing in it other kuritu helutte yavdu his bright poems whereas on the contrary to his bright poems we have terrible poems terrible poems deals with the transience of man's sins means the uh, mortality at the uh, impermanence anta yen karitivi adra kuritu ivra ee ondu poems Uh, concentrate marta hogate so this is all about his poetry and of course uh, we can't deny or neglect his uh, contribution to literature uh, to be precise poetry that is prang rhythm and also inscape and instress he coined these two words that is inscape and instress uh, sprung in sprung rhythm he uh, never uh, maintains or supports the quantity of the syllables ali one foot nalli now english meter prakara eshtu irbekagutte so one foot nalli anta heladre there should be two to three syllables irbeku anta heltivi but according to uh, gm hopkins uh, with his contribution to sprung rhythm he uh, nullifies this uh, 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 effect or or uh, stress on this syllables and uh, that may be what more than 3 that may be 4 anta kuda illi heltane yaru gm hopkins that is his contribution sprung rhythm and also he coinages these two words that uh, that are uh, inscape and instress is the uh, main characteristic of the poetry as the Mm, uh, individuality and uniqueness of an object one object na individuality and uniqueness anna heluvantad yavudu inscape he prefers the individuality and the uniqueness of an object uh, and that can be termed as inscape anta heltane illi and what is instress instress is the effect of that inscape 
in the mind of the artist. The artist na mind nali e inscape na effect yen barte, adu parinama yen aitu anta helu anta tu in stress. So uh, these two are his contributions to poetry. Okay. Let's uh, begin with uh, uh, today's poem that is one of his famous poems, The Sea and the Skylarks. The Sea and the Skylark and one to the Pura, poems are Livandu. And as I already told you, his uh, poems mainly deal with the concept of the tussle between nature and man so here also we can witness this theme uh, sorry theme mainly uh, as the tussle between sordid man and the permanent nature so you should understand the meaning of sordid what does sordid mean go to the argadro sordid and reno disgraceful bone sorry a disgraceful boon. Okay, I think there is some problem. I couldn't hear you, uh, Amresh. I'm really sorry. But anyhow, uh, leave it at that. Okay, uh, sordid means the unpleasantness, unpleasantry. And then I will act on Marco that were dirty and the too much under lagi to go that right. So, in me, uh, what we can understand is sordid man is uh, we can also relate to him as uh. Uh, what uh, transient man and the Kurana will Arthamar Kobodu and universal or permanent nature and the Hedere it deals with the eternity of the nature, so the permanence of the nature. So other Shashwa Tetia Kuritu, Ili Hedate, Adu, nature and Vantadu, but man and the Mandaga, we are mortals, we are not immortals, right? Nature is so here the main theme of this poem is. Uh, sordid uh, tussle between sordid man and the universal nature. So this particular poem is in sonnet form. Uh, I mean, every most of his poems are in sonnet form only. And he, though he appreciates, and I hope you know what a sonnet. Sonnet is a poem which consists of uh, fourteen lines. Nadinalakku salu karilu poem mana na wo sonnet anta karitivi. And there are two types, mainly two types in sonnet. What are they? Petrarchan or Italian and Shakespearean sonnet. How dalva? So and you, I think you know the difference between these two sonnets and you gain a difference and you can go to the So with that assumption, I proceed because uh, it, now it's not time to discuss about sonnets, but uh, early sonnet, early, it, uh, form of sonnet and I use Martin and the Hedre, he uses Italian sonnet form. And though he appreciates Shakespearean sonnet for categorization or classification of three quatrains and a couplet, he prefers to use uh, Italian form of sonnet. That's why he uses Italian form of sonnet. That's how he uh, gives a clarification with regard to his usage of Petrarchan sonnet or is Italian sonnet bagge hele vaga ata e vandu karnu na kordan nanga is experience sonnet ista aun form ista adro I prefer uh, Italian type of sonnet anta kora ata hele vaga yaro G M Hopkins so uh, it ad nantra <clears throat> Illy, here we can see a small change which he makes with regard to Italian form of uh, sonnet. Elvan Sanna change in the Nord Bohodo. Yen on the Hedre, I hope you know there are two sections, octave and sestet in Italian form of sonnet. Now, octave and sestet and cantivi. Octave uh, is of eight lines and sestet remaining what? Six lines. How the la? Adre Illy, he divides that sestet into Two types. Our sestet and the matte, yerdo, sorry, yerdo bhagagalaki, we bhagastan. He divides that into two sections. Yerdo sections are in the bhagastan. And one day, one slight modification which he makes with regard to Italian sonnet of uh, 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 while you. Okay. So, Adanantra, let's uh, move on to the poem, uh, The Sea and the Skylark. Uh, this basically is written in the year 1877, May, in the month of May. He 
uh, wrote this poem in the month of May and the year is 1877. And <clears throat> uh, this, if we look at this poem, there we can uh, see the seashore or sea. And uh, uh, this is very near to St. Bionois College where he was studying and that was situated in Wales. The uh, Wales Naliru and the Saint Bionois College in the Atawutta Dantatu. So, other Pakka Dale, very near to that, there is a sea uh, or uh, what is that right village on the town Bertha Rail and the Heli. So, on the town Kuritagi, Ilondu exposition Marta Hoktani Audrali, Ion the poem, the sea and the Skylark and Wanta. So Nordana, what he has to say about this uh, urban life and the uh, more immortal nature and the mortal man, let's try to analyze of this poem. Andre, one on the line by line, Martha Hopkins, Nordana. Let's try to analyze this poem. Uh, let me share this. I hope you can see this uh, slide and his uh, none other than our Jim Hopkins, Gerard Manley Hopkins. And <clears throat> here is the full poem. Uh, let me read out this poem for you. The sea and the skylark. On you and you, two noises, too old to end. Trench, right, the tide that ramps against the shore. With a flood or a fall, low lull of our all robe, frequenting there while moon shall wear and bend. On ear and ear, two noises too old to end. Trench, right, the tide that ramps against the shore. With a flood or a fall, Low lull of our all road, frequenting there while moon shall wear and bend. Left hand off land, I hear the lark ascend. His rash, fresh, rewinded new skein score. His scripts of curl of wild winch whirl and pour and melt, sorry, pelt till nuns to spill nor spend. Left hand off land, I hear the lark ascend his rash, fresh, rewinded new skin score. His scripts of curl of wild binge world and core and felt music till none to spill nor spend. How these two shame this shallow and frail town. How these two shame this shallow and frail town. How ring right out our sordid turbid time. Being too, we life's pride and care for crown have lost the cheer and charm of earth's past prime. Our make and making break or breaking down to man's last dust, drain fast towards man's first slime. Okay, so this is the complete poem or the sonnet, the sea and the skylark. Let's try to analyze the this poem line by line. I'll take this uh, first four lines for uh, analyzation. <clears throat> On ear and ear, two noises, too old to end. Okay? For is to both ears of the poet. So, uh, ear and ear, 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 the term ear, ear, ear is referred here twice. Ear is on ear and ear. And the he is referring to both of his ears. Let's imagine that a poet or a person is standing near. A sea or, or on the shore. So I'll yellow ninti dane hatra on the sea hatra no yellow. On ear and ear, two noises. He can hear two noises. The two noises are falling on 
ಇಸ್ ಬೋತ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಅವನ ಎರಡು ಕಿವಿಗಳಿಗೂ ಆ ಎರಡು ನಾಯ್ಸ್ ಶಬ್ದಗಳು ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಓಕೆ ನಾಯ್ಸ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಏನು ಗೊತ್ತರ ಮೆಲೋಡಿ ಅನ್ನೋದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಒಂದ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಗದ್ದಲದ ತರ ಎರಡು ಕಿವಿಗೂ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇ ಟೂ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಎಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಯೋರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ರೆಫರಿಂಗ್ ದಮ್ ಆಸ್ ಟೂ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಎಂಡ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಎಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ವೇ ಇಮಾರ್ಟಲ್ ಸೊ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾವಿಲ್ಲದಂತೆ ಯಾವುದೇ ಒಂದು ಎಂಡ್ ಇಲ್ಲದಂತೆ ಕೊನೆ ಇಲ್ಲದಂತೆ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಶಬ್ದ ಬಹುಶಃ ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾವೇ ಇಲ್ವೇನೋ ಈ ಶಬ್ದಗಳಿಗೆ ಎರಡೂ ಕಿವಿಗೂ ಆ ಎರಡು ಶಬ್ದಗಳು ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಆ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟೂ ನಾಯ್ಸಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡಸ್ ಹೀ ಮೀನ್ ಬೈ ಟ್ರೆಂಚ್ ಟ್ರೆಂಚ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ವಿಚ್ ಇಂಪ್ರೆಸಸ್ ದಿಸ್ impresses this sound impresses yado the right side illi avan heltane he is now very clear about the uh, positions of those sounds a eradu sounds ellinda bartta ide annodru bage heltane clear aagi and one is from the right that is impressing him yavadu impress martirudu ya right side bartta irodru the tide that rams against the shore this is the sound or noise from the tide so tide andre a alegala sound bage maatartane illi ondu aleya sound kelustha ide ellinda from his right side avana bala bhagadinda kelustha ide sound that means uh, for, towards his right there we can uh, assume that there is a sea anta na vartha maatkobodu so alli a samudra athwa ondu sarovara sagara athwa nadi yen bekadre irbodu adra shore inda adra dale uh, sorry dada yen irutte ಅಲ್ಲಿಂದ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಏನ್ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಆ ಒಂದು ಅಲೆ ಹರಿದ್ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇರೋ ತರ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅದ್ರ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅವನಿಗೆ ಎಲ್ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಯಾವ ಭಾಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾಲಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಓಕೆ ಅಂಡ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಫ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಫ್ಲಚ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಫಾಲ್ ಲೋ ಲಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ರೋಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಫ್ಲಚ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಫಾಲ್ ಸೊ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಸಾರಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ದ ಟೈಡ್ ದಟ್ ರ್ಯಾಮ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ ದ ಶೋರ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ರ್ಯಾಂಪ್ ಅನ್ನುವಂತಹ ಪದ ಏನ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅದ್ರ ಅರ್ಥ ಏನು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬಂದು ಗಿಡಾರ್ ಅಂತ ನಮ್ಮ ಮೇಲೆ ಅಪ್ಪಳಿಸುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಲ್ಲ ಆ ಒಂದು ಅಪ್ಪಳಿಸುವಿಕೆಯನ್ನ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ರ್ಯಾಂಪ್ ಅನ್ನೋ ಅನ್ನೋ ಪದಕ್ಕೆ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋಬಹುದು ಆ ಟೈಡ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಹೇಗ್ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬಂದು ಕಿವಿಗೆ ಅಪ್ಪಳಿಸೋ ತರ ಕೇಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಸೊ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಹೋಗೋಣ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಫ್ಲಡ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಫಾಲ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಟು ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಯೂಸ್ ರ್ಯಾಂಪ್ ಯೂಸಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಫ್ಲಡ್ ಅದ್ ಹೇಗ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಹಿಸುವಿಕೆ ಹೇಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಒಂದು ಸಾ ಪ್ರವಾಹದ ತರ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಲೈಕ್ ಫ್ಲಡ್ ಬಂದು ಕಿವಿಗೆ ಬೀಳ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಆ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಅಲೆಗಳ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ಎ ಫಾಲ್ ಅಥವಾ ಅದು ವಾಪಸ್ ಕೂಡ ದ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಟೈಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ರ್ಯಾಮ್ಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಶೋ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ರಿಟ್ರೀಟ್ಸ್ ಅದ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ವಾಪಸ್ ಹೋಗೇ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಅಲೆ ಈಗ ನಾವು ಸಮುದ್ರದಲ್ಲಿ ನೋಡಿದ್ರೆ ಅದ್ ಹೇಗೆ ಬರುತ್ತೋ ಹಾಗೆ ಮುಂದಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಎರಡನ್ನು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾನೆ ಇಟ್ ರ್ಯಾಮ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ಫ್ಲಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟ್ರಿಟ್ರೀಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಕೂಡ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ವಾಪಸ್ ಕೂಡ ಹಿಂದೆ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೆ ಹೇಗೆ ಲೋ ಲಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ ಲೋ ಲಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದರ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಲಲ್ ಲಲ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಫಾಸ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ pause after the wave strikes against the shore and then retreats at bartai thake that immediately doesn't uh, retreat or doesn't go back doesn't fall and wapas hange hogbudala in bandu hage hogala there is a lull there is a pause and in sun the pause ide after that it retreats lull off or all roar but when the next wave comes there is all roar or a big noise so within that point of time within that pause only another tide will come and uh, that makes roar alli no al mattond arbata kelisutte ee modalu bandantaha ale but kivige biddirutte aa sound kelisukolta irthivi a solpa nintu inde adu vapas hogta ide annu ashtalla agle innond ale bandu namma kivige
frequenting the this is a constant one if this uh, always have ಯಾವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಆಗಾಗ ಈ ಒಂದು ಕಾರ್ಯ ನಡೀತಾನೆ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಯಾವಾಗ್ಲೂ ನಡೀತಾ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಬಟ್ ಟಿಲ್ ವೆನ್ ಎಲ್ಲಿವರೆಗೆ ವೈಲ್ ಮೂನ್ ಶೆಲ್ ವೆರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ವೆರ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವೀಕ್ ವೆನ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಲೋ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ದ ಮೂನ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ವೀಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಲೋ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ದ ಮೂನ್ ರಿಟ್ರೇಟ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ will be stopped and one the matter nahi hetane why he refers moon here because can anybody tell me why he refers moon here while referring to the movement of the tide ಸೊ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಇದನ್ನ ಯಾಕೆ ಮೂನ್ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಅದ್ರ ಟೈಡ್ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಮೂನ್ ಅನ್ನ ರಿಲೇಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾನೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬೋಳತ್ ಅಂತ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಅಜಂಡವಾದ ಒಂದು ನೋಷನ್ ಏನಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಅಲೆಗಳು ಚಂದ್ರನ ಪ್ರಭಾವದ ಮೇಲೆ ಸಂಭವಿಸ್ತವೆ ಅಂತ ಆ ಅಲೆಗಳು ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಅದನ್ನ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಬೆಳಕು ಬೀಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದ ಹಾಗೇನೆ ಅಲೆಗಳ ಮೂವ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕೂಡ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಚಂದ್ರ ಈ ಅಲೆಗಳನ್ನ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ has the moon has that capacity to control over tides and what the how do notion there that's why he says that the poet here says that this act of uh, roaring and lulling um, uh, takes on till the moon becomes weak and slow yelli vargu moon athwa chandra slow agalvo athwa ata weak agalvo alli vargu ee ondu alegala pravaha hige bartta irutte and i can hear this sound of ee ondu aleya sound anna helthane okay i first line he talks about two noises uh, which affect Uh, his two ears and uh, later in the three lines he discusses about uh, tides the sound of tides which comes from his balabhagadinda baruvanta aalegala sound bage maatartane ulida mudu saalgalalli so next nodana left hand of land so now he comes to his left side ಸೊ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ರೈಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆಲೆಗಳ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಆಯ್ತು ವಾಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಆನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಯು ಆರ್ ಆನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಆಫ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅಬೌವ್ ದ ಅರ್ತ್ ಸೊ ಭೂಮಿಯ ಮೇಲೆ ಆಕಾಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಹಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಅ ಸೌಂಡ್ ಐ ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಕ್ ಅಸೈನ್ okay i can hear a skylark which flies upwards into the sky ascend means that is flying upwards okay uh, this ascend means coming downwards so ill ascend ant heladre a ondu skylark he is referring to skylark that is a song bird so a skylark ana refer maartta idane from his left side he can hear to the uh, skylark which is Uh, flying upwards into the sky adu akashadalli ettara ettarakke haatta haatta thanu sushravya vada avondu thanna kooginidda thanna kiviyanna thanna illi heltane and next his rash fresh rewinded new skin score okay his rash fresh his means he is referring to the skylark his rash fresh rash fresh means that looks like a fresh very new uh, and rewinded back to the beginning renewed refreshed so rewinded and helidre that is uh, in its uh, beginning of the life anuvanta artadalle barutte allu kuda thana ee life anna igashte shuru madidi madideno anuvanta aa ond aarambhada jeevanalli hege irutto aa ond reference anna illi kodtane so reincorporated anta kuda navu illi helabodu so rash fresh is a term coined by gm hopkins himself which means 
excitingly fresh or new we'll discuss uh, discuss about these two terms that is rash fresh and, um, and also about uh, new skin score idr bakke nan munde aa ond metaphor bage helvaga heltini actually these two phrases are invented or coined by jim hopkins himself to mean something else that is rash fresh means uh, fresh or new new sky score means the song of the skylark is like a musical <coughs> score which is compared to a new skein of wool skein of wool anta helidre nimge kannadadalli helbeku andre pakka tarjume hege anta helidre iga wool nimge aa unneya dara nodidira alva aa unneya daravanna hege ittirtare athwa maamuli hattide age bodu adanna ondu kaddigo athwa yavudu kosuttirtare ee unneya dara agidre adanna ondu doddu lump tara maadi ondu unde tara maadi darada unde anta yen karithivi aa unde tara maadi kattittirtarala yavudu ondu tool ge adanna skul sutti irtarala adanna ನಾವು ಸ್ಕೇನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೂಲ್ ಅಂತ ಕರಿಬಹುದು ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಇದು ಹೇಗಿದೆಯಪ್ಪ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಅವನು ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಯಾವ್ದು ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾನೆ ವಾಯ್ಸ್ which is producing ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸ್ಕೈ ಲಾಕ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಪೇರಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಟು ರ್ಯಾಶ್ ಫ್ರೆಶ್ ರ್ಯಾಶ್ ಫ್ರೆಶ್ ರೀಪೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಸ್ಕೈನ್ ಸ್ಕೋರ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಬಹಳ ಫ್ರೆಶ್ ಆಗಿರುವಂತ ತಾಜಾತನಕ್ಕೆ ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾನೆ ಯಾವ ಯಾವ್ದನ್ನ ಸೊ ಎಸ್ ಕಾಯಿನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟೂ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ರ್ಯಾಶ್ ಫ್ರೆಶ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಸ್ಕೈನ್ ಸ್ಕೋರ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಸ್ಕೈನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರೆಶ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೀಸ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಸ್ಕೈನ್ ಸ್ಕೋರ್ ಹೀಸ್ ರೆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಉಣ್ಣೆಯ ಉಂಡೆ ನಾನು ಆಗ್ಲೇ ಹೇಳಿದೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಸಾರಿ ಆ ಉಣ್ಣೆಯಿಂದ ಮಾಡಿದಂತಹ ಉಳ್ಳಿಂದ ಮಾಡಿದಂತಹ ಉಂಡೆಯನ್ನ ನಾವಿಲ್ಲಿ ರೆಫರ್ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ಸೊ ಅದನ್ನ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಗೆ ಬಳಸ್ತಾನೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ದ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಹಿಯೋ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೈ ಲಾಕ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ಸ್ಕೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ವೂಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ಗುಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಹಿ ಕ್ಲೈಮ್ಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೈ ಟು ಸ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರೀವುಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಹಿ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ ಇದು ಹೇಗಿರುತ್ತಂತೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಅದು ತಾನು ಹಾರ್ ಹಾರ್ತಾ ಮೇಲಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಯಾವ್ದು ಸ್ಕೈ ಲಾಕ್ ಮೇಲಕ್ಕೆ ಹಾರುವಾಗ ಈ ಉಣ್ಣೆಯ ಉಂಡೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಮೇಲಿಂದ ನೀವು ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಇದು ಹೇಗೆ ದಾರವನ್ನ ಬಿಡಿಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಆ ಉಂಡೆಯಿಂದ ಆ ಒಂದು ಲಂಪ್ ಇಂದ ದಾರ ಹೇಗೆ ಬೆರ್ಪಡ್ತಾ ಹೋಗುತ್ತೋ ಹಾಗೆ ಇದು ಹಾರ್ತಾ ಮೇಲಕ್ಕೆ ಹಾರುತ್ತಂತೆ ವಾಪಸ್ ಬರುವಾಗ ಈ ಹೇಗೆ ದಾರವನ್ನ ನಾವು ಮತ್ತೆ ಸುತ್ತೀವಲ್ಲ ಆ ಒಂದು ಟೂಲ್ಗೆ ಆ ತರ ಅದು ವಾಪಸ್ ಬರುವಾಗ ಕಾಣುತ್ತಂತೆ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಕಂಪೇರ್ಸ್ ಅನಲೈಸ್ ದ ಸಾಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಕೈ ಲಾಕ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ದೀಸ್ ಟು ಮೆಟಾಫರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಹೈಲಿ ಇಂಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಟು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಎನಿ ಪೊಯಿಟಿಕ್ ಮೆರಿಟ್ ವಿತ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡ್ ಟು ದೀಸ್ ಮೆಟಾಫರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಐ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಹಾಪ್ಕಿನ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಮಾತನ್ನ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಏನು ಈ ಒಂದು ಮೆಟಾಫರ್ಸ್ ಎರಡು ನಾನು ಆಗ್ಲೇ ಹೇಳ್ದಾಗ ರ್ಯಾಶ್ ಫ್ರೆಶ್ ಮತ್ತು ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಅನ್ನುವಂತ ಪದವನ್ನ ಬಳಸ್ತಾರಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಈ ಮೆಟಾಫರ್ ಅನ್ನ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಬಳಸಿದಾನೆ ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾರು ಹಾಪ್ಕಿನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನುವಂತ ಮಾತನ್ನ ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಬಟ್ ಅದನ್ನ ಮುಂದೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಪ್ಕಿನ್ಸ್ ಹೇಗೆ ಒಂದು ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾರೆ ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನ ನಾವು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮುಂದೆ ನೋಡೋಣ ಇನ್ ಕ್ರಿಸ್ಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ಲ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈಲ್ಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪೋರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪೆಲ್ತ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ರಿಸ್ಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ಲ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈಲ್ಡ್ ವಿಂಚ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಹಿಯೋ ದ ಸ್ಕೈ ಲಾಕ್ ಸೀಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಕಲ್ ಸ್ಕೋರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವೆಂಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ತ್ರೋತ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಸ್ಮೂತ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಅ ಫ್ಲೋ ಬಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವರ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ calls of melody so illi idu yen artha maarkobodu hege anta helidre here every note of the melody is compared to a lock of leaves waving in the air so here yen helidra crisp means freshness crispy agirbeku anta helidre we can refer to that as freshness of curl curl means to move round in a ಕವಿ ಬೇಕ್ ಸೊ ಕವ್ ಕರ್ವಿ ಸುರುಳಿ ಸುರುಳಿ ಆಗಿ ಮೂವ್ ಆಗ
ನೀವು ಟರ್ನ್ ಮಾಡುವಾಗ ಅದನ್ನ ರೋಲ್ ಮಾಡುವಾಗ ಯಾವ್ದೋ ಒಂದು ಮಷಿನ್ಗೆ ಸಿಕ್ಸಿ ರೋಲ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಲ್ಲ ಯಾವ್ದೋ ಒಂದು ರಾಟೆಯನ್ನ ಈಗ ತಿರ್ಗಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೊಂದು ಯಾವ್ದೋ ಒಂದು ಟೂಲ್ ಅನ್ನ ಸೇರಿಸಿ ಅದನ್ನ ಅದ್ರ ಸಹಾಯದಿಂದ ತಿರ್ಗಿಸ್ತೀವಲ್ಲ ಅದನ್ನ ವಿಂಚ್ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಅಂಡ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಮೂವ್ ರೌಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರೌಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಇದು ಒಟ್ಟಾಗಿ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ದೆನ್ ನೀದರ್ ಮೇಕ್ ದ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೈ ಲಾಕ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ ಮೋರ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪೊಸಿಸ್ any ornamental value so illi in a letter to robert bridges the poet gave a detailed explanation of the poem but this prose rendering of the poem is as difficult and annoying as the particular lines in the poem so illi ee eradu line kala bakke solpa difficulty id artha maarkolodu anta readers inda odugarinda abhipraya bandaga aata robert bridges ke ondu letter anna baritane so alli difficult and annoying anuvanta maatannu kuda avanu oppoltane so but <clears throat> here what you need to understand is the skylark seems to whirl his musical score off the winch of his throat so then a one throat na sahayadinda a musical will and create maartta ide yavudu ee skylark on surli tara skylark heart pound or pound alli one surli anna create maartta ide anta navu artha maarkobodu and poor and felt music the skylark pours his music that is produces his melody without any of effort so that is pure pouring his music skylark anadu yen maartta ide adu ondu harustta ide music anna ondu holeyanne harustta ide that produces his melody without any effort yavude kashta illadage yav prayatnavu illadage easy aagi aa skylark yen maartta ide illi aa melody anna produce maartta ide and the skylark also felts his music in the sense of making a great effort to produce it without a pause as long as he is in the air jothege na vil innond en artha markobodu andre it felt music anta helidre on effortless vidhana anta ankondru kuda at the same time you can see the effort put by to produce the great music without any pause in the air yavade vandu yen heltira tade illad hage aakashdalli haaraadta aa ondu music anna produce maduva vidana adu ontara tumbane effort anna bedutte adre adu haadu reethiyanna nodadaga adu ondu reethi effortless anta anisibidutte namge so uh, this is how skylark is producing a kind of melody in the air anta heltane till nuns to spill nor spend so spill means to pour to spend means to use so the skylark sings till there is no longer any music left with him to pour out or produce so id hege la haartta ide skylark anta helidre uh that left with no music to produce again adelli varagu haadutte inna adakke ilve ilve no music thana battalikelli dehadalli aa music ellavannu iruvanta dellavannu thana kanthadinda aache haakputide in matte haadu andre nanatra haadodike ulidirbaru anno reethiyalli it's pouring out his music so adanna yen maartta ide aa music ellavannu gottirodennella aache aagta idino anno tarada ond melodious sound alli kel bartta ide so Uh, this is what spill nor spend alva so illi ee ondu lines alla nave en nodkobodu anta helidre he talks about the skylark and uh, hits uh, effort to produce a melodious music tireless yavade ondu tiresomeness illadage ondu pause illadage ondu stop illadage a never ending process thara kanistha ide the production of music or melody by the song bird called the skylark okay so here what we need to understand is with the comparison of these two uh, with the analysis of these two songs that means yavado uh, uh the sound produced by the tide and the sound produced by the skylark iveradanna nodadaga namage adu yen anusutte andre that looks like a never ending procedure adu ontara ending ge illadhage everlasting never ending procedure tara kaanutte that has the permanence in its uh, as its quality one rite permanence anna navu nodabodu and it is immoral anta kuda helabodu ee sound ee elrinda produce aguvanta sound anna aita 
So suddenly, the tone of this poem changes. So either or more, we can see the appreciation regarding to this production of created by both the uh, Skylark and the Tides. You will see the change in this sound. How these shame this shallow and frail town. How ring right out our sordid turbid time. Okay, Ilian Heltane, Sadan Nagi, our nature and our understanding, nature representing by tide and skylark. Here he comes to describe the town that is rural, uh, RHYL rural. So our the town, in urban town, it to other Nile discuss Mado the Ketagoltana, even though line Nile. The town of Rill, where this poem was written, is thus described. Actually, this poem was written in Rill, Heldini. And shallow and frail are terms of disparagement, for the town or urban life has contrasted with the life of nature represented by the sea and the sky. So, shallow and frail and one padagalu. Ali Hagen Avu, a beauty and a described Martane, are the other contrast and the Nilam Nord Bodo. You know, the town and now it is shallow and frail and the Karitan, which is not deep and the Hair Bodo, which is not serious and the Hair Bodo, and frail is weak, which is not healthy and then a frail and another gap on the Kurbodo. So, Ali, you, you can see the full of life in those two objects of nature, Yadu, Tide, and uh, the Skyla. And full new life on the country. Whereas in this town, which is man made, which is created by the man himself, so represents his shallowness and frailty. So, Ali, in Nortivinavu, and Riti shallowness, and seriousness, and healthy, Yagila, on the town. And we can't so, this is the contrast How ring right out our sordid chop with time. So, how ring right out our sordid chop. Sordid, I have already told you, it's an unpleasant thing or dirty. You can also mean dirty by turbid, sorry, sordid. And turbid means it's a confused state, only the confusion and then of turbid and the karibodo. So, really, the, what does it mean and the hell there? These two, the sea and the sky, are two, and they effectively habitations which are ugly and muddy. So, really, uh, even though. Skylark matu tairi yao kelsa maadat paanta hildre they are so pure being pure avaru eshto veradu pavitrava gidave anta hildre they can effectively ring out ring out and they can eliminate our urban impurities which are ugly and muddy tumba kuvupata nadinda kudiruvantaha bari dirtiness inda kudiruvantaha yavudu nam urban life enide so even the urbanity enide idanna the purity of skylark and the tide can eliminate can bring out ring right out anvanta maatu kanta heltane and we life's pride and care for crown we being the human beings we are the uh, proud creations right now devara srishti madanta atyanta hemmeya srishtiyalli manushya obba anta helkoltivi we are the pride creation by the god howdala so life's pride and care for crown <clears throat> so yava uh, glow you know the topmost beings in the world and we are Cared by the crowd himself. Crowd means here God. Devare namabake swadaha care to kundu create madadin and feeling namabake namke. So that's why he calls human beings as life's pride and they are cared by the God himself. Antaha manusharo igena gidare have lost that cheer and charm of earth's past pride. 
they have lost the cheer avand charm matte cheer enittu a lifeless lifeless enittu adu ella hogi the lifelessness agogibide of earth's past prime so idu ellavu enagittu past prime here means we have lost the glory of the morning of human life now our the morning now we got like this sanche alli devi our our human life na sanche alli now nintidevi andre now modalige ee manushya jeevana shuruvaadaga hegittu aa ond beginning morning hegittu aa morning iga now uliskondilla we have lost that morning that prime okay that quality of earth so we have lost the cheer and charm and our make and making break are breaking down to man's last dust drain fast towards man's first slime so our make and making break so here the syntax here is also not clear so you don't know ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾನೆ ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದು ಒಂಚೂರು ಕಷ್ಟ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಆದ್ರೂ ಕೂಡ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಸೀಮ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದಟ್ ಅವರ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲಿನೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಕೆ ಅಂಡ್ ರೆಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಸೊ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಇದನ್ನ ಈ ಫ್ರೇಸಸ್ ಏನ್ ಅರ್ಥ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರ ಮೇಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ರೇಕ್ ಆರ್ ಬ್ರೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ಮ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಬೇಕಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಗು ನಾವು ಇದನ್ನ ಹೇಗೆ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ನೇಚರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲಿನೇಷನ್ಸ್ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ನೇಚರ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲಿನೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಏನಿತ್ತು ದೇ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಕೆ ಅಂಡ್ ರೆಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಅದು ಈಗ ಎಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಕೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅದು ತನ್ನ ವಿನಾಶದತ್ತ ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಭಾರತದಲ್ಲಿ ಬಳಸ್ತಾನೆ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಇಸ್ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ಮ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ನಮ್ಮ ಒಂದು ಅಸಂಪ್ಷನ್ ಏನು ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಡಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಡಸ್ಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಹುಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಒಂದು ಮಣ್ಣಿನಿಂದ ಮತ್ತೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಹೋಗ್ತಾನೆ ಅನ್ನುವಂತ ಮಾತಿದ್ರೆ ಹಾಗೆ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಹೂ ಹೀಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಡಸ್ಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಡಸ್ಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ಅದು ಹೋಗುವಂತಹ ನಡುವೆ ನಾವು ಎಂತ ರೀತಿ ಇರ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿತ್ತು ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಇರ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿತ್ತು ಆ ಒಂದು ಚಾರ್ ಮಂಚಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲಾಸ್ ದ ಚರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಚಾರ್ ಸೊ ಬೀಂಗ್ ನೋನ್ ಟು ದ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸಾರಿ ಮಾರ್ಟಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ uh making his life worse anta na will helbodu is gottiddu kuda manushya yen martta idane nan yavattu permanent alla annodu anta leg bandirutte when he is born his death is also certain manushya hutti takshana avana death kuda certain nischitavagide but still he is doing such normal anta na will helbodu so this is how he hence his uh, uh, sonnet that is the sky and the sky. uh c c and the sky la sorry so here <clears throat> what we can see is that eradu uh, ondu prakriya galanna ittkondu andre ondu kade nature anna represent maduvantaha c matte sky la mattondu kade manushya manushya nirmita ondu patrana so iveradu eshtu contradictory in nature anna kelta idaru poet in order to show the tersel or the transients nature of man and the universality or the permanence or the immortality of nature konege meluga ya but we fail to understand this fact that we act as if we are immortal now one riti immortal now what a cell now yavaglu hige irtivi anno arthadalli manushya badikita badikidane annu anta arthadalli ee ondu poem barutte this is the main theme of this poem uh, or sonnet and if we look at the theme as i have already explained it this is a conflict between eternal nature and the transient man and we should be aware of the fact that always at the end the nature wins and not the man because he is the transient one and not the nature and nodu navil artha maarkobeku and let's see the mood of the poem uh, i think i have explained this to you in the octave of this sonnet we can see the joyous mood in poet's mind how the la ata yavaga see matte skylark anna explain martane how he 
uh, depicts or uh, explains the act of uh, tide and skylark you can see that he is in so uh, joyous mood and he is so happy and cheerful how the rest tumba khush khushiyagi madutara nam kanutre while he comes to the sister when he describes the adventy of man or the earth the stone becomes very pessimistic and there we can also recognize a sense of loss you can see the sense of loss in that part of sestet alia sestet nalli na on sense of loss anu na nodabodu and if we look at the rhyme nan agle helidini illi strong rhythm anna use martane jm hopkins anta helabodadru illi navu especially here jm hopkins uses counterpoint anta helabodu illi counterpoint anta andre yenu anta helidre Uh, in music counterpointing occurs when a different melody runs at the same time above or below another melody samanyavagi one poem ant helidre one reetiya rhymes ki merbeku mattond annu anta yenu one vada ide adanna virodisi eradu muru tarada one rhyme scheme anna illi tartanta rhythm anna tartanta so elli ee one poem alli alli one standard rhythm anna use maartane at the same time he uses uh, sprung rhythm in the lines 2 uh, 6 and i think 11 okay so hagagi idana counterpointing anta kuda na karibodu and another important theme is onomatopoeia so yen hagandre illi onomatopoeia anta helidre adanna yava use maartare anta helidre this is the word okay to describe the sounds so here it sounds one shabda kala yenagutte aa shabda kalana varnisodakke padagalanna balasthivalla adanna onomatopoeia anta nau karithi literature nalli so adu ondu ee onomatopoeia anadakke ninge pakka example helbeku andre ega for example his yeah his anta heldaga we use that sound to refer to the sound of a snake how the like hissing anta helidre a snake sound anna now helodikke hiss hissing anta heltivi hage third third anta on the door we can use the term third okay these are the words used to represent or represent the sounds okay a sounds anna represent madodike navu ee ondu padavanna use maartivi so ee ee ondu idanna device anna illi ee poem nalli bahala use maarkondidane ee tarana sounds baruthe illi namma poem c and the skylark nalli and if you look at the rhyming scheme of the poem uh, let me go back to the poem okay if you look at the rhyming scheme of the poem can you tell me about the rhyming scheme yaradru helthira thumba easy ankotini idu idu helbodu rhyming scheme yen barutte just concentrate on the last words of each line ap kone padagalna nodi yav rhyming scheme barutte anta heli a b e right but again a yeah, very good who is this devraj a b b a yeah, very good a end a shore b roar again b went a a b b a yeah. right right again here ascend for for span what is this a b what is, what about this again this repeats here a b b a yeah. okay come to this part sestet down time crown prime down slime this is entirely different from a and b that's why we should treat this as c down c this is time d c d c d c d. okay yes another important thing the uh, which uh, we should observe here or make note of uh, in this poem is alliteration i think you know the meaning of alliteration alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds okay uh, in contrast to this the repetition of 
ओवल सॉन्ग इज नोन एसोनेस अंदर ओवल सॉन्ग रेपिटेशन अलिट्रेशन रेपिटेशन ऑफ कॉन्सोनेंट सॉन्ग्स कॉन्सोनेंट अथवा व्यंजन शब्द पुनरावर्तने अलिट्रेशन अंत करती सो इले कॉन्सोनेंट सांगिटेशन तुम्बा नोड़ी फॉर् एक्सापल फ्लड और फॉल लो लल ऑफ और आल रोल ओके फ्लड फा फा फ्लड फॉल लो लल इन क्रिस्ट ऑफ कॉल ऑफ वैल्ड वेंच वर्ल्ड अंड फॉर सो हियर यू कैन सी दिस क्रिस्ट ऑफ कॉल क क and while when while sound so you can observe the repetition of consonant sound so here he successfully uses this alliteration that is also an important thing which you make note of uh, with regard to this poem and the complex metaphor i think i have already explained this to you the complex metaphors which he uses here is rash fresh So let's see what Jim Hawkins has to say himself. आता नहीं है लेकिन हाँ के rash fresh अनुवाद तो complex metaphor बगे तुम बा इन बरते हैं इन्हों वो देख रहे हैं आता अगर ला याव अच्छे दल बरस के रात तक गोता के लात अगा he uh, writes a letter to Robert Bridges clarifying the meaning of these two terms. That is rash fresh. It's a phrase means a headlong or exciting. new snatch of singing resumption by the lark of his song which by turns he gives over and takes up again all day long so on the new freshy nature bage heluvaga idan balustare and new scaint gives the impression of something falling to the earth and not vertically why but tricklingly or wavingly something as a skein of silk ripped by having been tightly wound On a narrow cart, or a notched holder, or as fishing tackle from a reel or rig winch. And one thing about that, na, hey, then I have heard that the new kind of one that padal score of one that one that it bantha la, ya phrase bantha la. I think here, but instead of that, you want to cut the air, or you want to unde, or unde, dar da unde na it kono. And now what he get? Brista hobi, brista hobi do dar na. मत सुक्रिया मेल हारे हाकते मत दार सुक Jim Hopkins himself, and he gives uh, clarification with regard to these two phrases. Okay, and uh, here ends the poem. This is what sea and the sky. How do we understand the concept yeah. of sprung rhythm? Uh, I think I have already explained. Uh, uh, okay, what does the lark symbolize? हाँ स्प्रंग रिदम अभी अंदी स्प्रंग रिदम ऐनती रिस्ट्रिक्शन अंदर नाना फूट नरबल बरबू अथवाबल यार बेरे पॉइंट मीटर अंत बंदा बट इट्स एन इरेग्युलाम आफ प्रोसोडी अंत ना हेलबू यार अकॉर्ंग टू जी एम फॉर एक्सापल Food may be composed from one to four syllables. One in the Nagpur syllables are both English meters. A food consists of only two or three syllables. But even that, there are four syllables are both on the head tone. Okay, this is what he defines by uh, sprung rhythm. And what is this? Uh, lark symbolizes the kingdom. I have Samira. I think I have uh, explained that as well, Samira, because uh, here both sea uh, tide and lark symbolize the 
uh, products of nature, which in terms uh, very symbolic of its characteristic of being permanent and immortal. Our immortality, but the permanence and what the characteristic feature of nature is there. So other than that, only love and even uh, type also symbolize. Thank you so much, madam, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And uh, as I have already, I mean, in the yesterday's session also, uh, I acknowledge that it's really great to be with the students of literature, uh, being a student of literature. And I really thank you um, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, my dear students, uh, that was uh, all the four sessions were really good for me as you were the very uh, interactive and active students and i liked your participation thank you so much thank you